Hello. In this short video, I will demonstrate how to quickly get up and running with the WebLogic Server 1221 developer distribution. In this video, you'll see how a quick install can be performed, how to create a domain using the configuration wizard that is delivered with WebLogic Server, how to start a server, and then how to access the administration console. As with all of the Oracle products, the WebLogic Server 1221 developer distribution is available from the main Oracle website in the products download area. For the purposes of saving time in this video, I've already downloaded the developer distribution and have it available on my desktop. As you can see, we have made a change to the way in which the developer distribution is delivered with the 1221 release. We've moved away from the zip distribution model and in its place have provided a command line lightweight installation mechanism that is delivered as an executable jar file. Some of the benefits of this new installation or approach are that it provides a very high level of consistency with the production release installers so developers can build with confidence knowing their dev, test and production server installations can all be similar. This can be achieved by the delivery of the standard Oracle OPatch utility within the developer distribution. This provides developers with the ability to up download and apply standard WebLogic server patches to their development environments if they need to. To install the WebLogic Server 12 to 1 developer distribution, you simply need to run the jar file from a terminal. and this is what the command would look like. Without any configuration options, this will install WebLogic into the current working directory. If you wish to specify a different target directory, that can be done using a command line option called Oracle Home, which would look like this. I will use the default settings for this install. Here you can see that the installer is now executing. Note that it says it's using the present working directory slash WS12210 as the target Oracle home. The installer will now run for a short while. With the install complete, let's have a look at what was installed. Here you can see it's just a typical WebLogic server installation. Let's now simply and quickly get a server up and running. Here you have two choices. Firstly, you can create a new domain entirely from the command line by first executing an environment variable script to set some variables such as the class path, then manually starting WebLogic server using the java-jar weblogic.server command. This will implicitly create a new domain and start the server. Alternatively, you can use the configuration wizard to create a new domain. One of the cool things about the WebLogic server developer distribution is that it isn't functionally cut down in any way from the full product. You get the administration console, the domain builders, the configuration wizard, the WLST scripting environment, and so forth. 
So let's fire up the configuration wizard and create a new domain. We can very quickly step through the wizard to create a domain, except in the defaults where we only really need to specify the administrator username and password. Of course, we can drive down into the simple configuration screens and specify host names, ports, as well as creating cluster, associated servers, and so forth. But in this case, we just want a simple development server. So let's click through and finish up. With the domain created, we can now start the server. Once the server's up and running, we now have a fully functioning WebLogic server instance to use, from where we can access the console, to configure services, deploy applications, and so forth. Let's now take a brief look at the console. Clicking around on the console, we can see evidence of some of the new features in this major new WebLogic server release. For instance, the petitions to support the multi-tenant capability. And we can also see at the domain level some of the configuration options for the new Java EE services such as batch and concurrency. Okay, so there it is the installation of WebLogic Server 12.2.1, the creation of domain and the starting of a server, all very simple and quick to execute.